I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 15th of February, 2023, and this is my vlog of daily life in Nicaragua. Today, we are fully in uh, the island of Ometepe, and we're going to be showing you around the island today. Let's get right to it. All right, today was really uh, a lot of logistics. Yesterday was a travel day. So we spent the entire day just getting to the island and uh, you know, buses and ferries and taxis and all that uh, and figuring out hotels and stuff like that. That was, that was our day. Now we're on the island. We are here all day today, all day tomorrow. We're going to be heading back on Friday morning. So we have a little bit of time um, to show you around, not a lot. This is not like a huge, we're not here filming. This is Nicaragua, Ometepe or anything like that. This was a chance to come out for an extended kind of weekend sort of thing. We have a lot going on on the upcoming weekends and just uh, some, some things came together and it made it possible to run out and do a few days out here. Uh, we had actually hoped to go to Honduras and the people that were come, coming with us uh, found out that they needed a couple extra days of warning to tell the border they were coming in order to go. They don't need passports, but they need this extra time and we weren't able to do that. So this is where we were able to come on short notice and it's it's fantastic. Ometepe, if you've never been, uh, is one of those places you really have to go to in Nicaragua. This is one of the must-see locations. Uh, it really falls into like Granada, like Leon, um, it's at the very, very top of the This Is Unique to Nicaragua places. It's a dual volcano island in the middle of an enormous freshwater lake. Uh, so it's not part of the ocean, even though it looks and feels like it much of the time. Uh, it's, it, it's just crazy unique with 50,000 people living on a volcanic island that's accessible only by ferry in the middle of the country. Like nowhere else is like this. It's, it's not just like, ah, you don't get to those every day. No, no, no. This is unique, really cool. Um, and uh, this is only our second time here. Dominic and I came in 2015 with the kids for a day. We never spent a night on uh, the island. So that's kind of exciting as well that we're gonna spend quite a bit more time. We're, we're really getting more Ometepe under our belts uh, on this particular trip um, and doing a lot of reconnaissance so that we know what the status of things are now and making it possible uh, prepare in the future uh, for um, for filming This is Nicaragua, Ometepe. Sorry, my brain completely shut down there. Today ended up, and this is actually uh, really important when it comes to talking about Ometepe, a day of logistics on Ometepe. Uh, and I think um, I've talked to a lot of people and I've read a lot about uh, people coming here and the story is very similar from so many people. It's really worth talking about uh, what it takes to, to, to be on Ometepe. So when you're looking at this island, it's easy to, to see it as being a big tourist destination. Basically everything on the island is geared around tourists. Uh, everything you see about it is activities and hotels and um, it, it has a lot of that uh, Caribbean Isle kind of feeling. Not the, not the food and music that you would get in the Caribbean. It doesn't have that. It's still uh, very Nicaraguan and if anything more of the Pacific and it's very close to the Pacific. Um, if you look at points that it touches like La Verhen, it's only uh, 15 minutes from the Pacific beaches. So it tends to share that culture, but without whatever it is that makes the Pacific the Pacific, right? It doesn't have the, the fish and the salt water and the, and the breeze and those kinds of things that you do get on the actual Pacific. But other than that, it tends to be Nicaraguan Pacific culture. Uh, so that that's all very cool. Uh, when you're, but when you're on the island, you you think, well, it's got to have all this tourist infrastructure. Everyone goes there. It's on everybody's must see list in Nicaragua. So of all the places I go, I'll just show up and all will be well. There'll be so many options to do things. Absolutely not. This is not a place you can do that. Even though there is a strong tourist drive here, a focus. There is uh, so actually so little tourism going on on the island. And now with how, how much um, the, the, the tourism industry is struggling here, uh, the amount that things have collapsed and are closed or people have given up, even though this is the high season, um, everything is empty, most things are closed, uh, even restaurants, very hard to get in. Now you'll see tourists everywhere. Like that's not a problem. It's not that there's no tourist, right? Um, as you go around the island, so it has basically, it's not exactly a ring road, but it's like two ring roads connected. So it's kind of like a figure eight because it's basically two islands connected by a lowland. Uh, and you'll see people on scooters and, and ATVs zipping between the, uh, the little towns and stuff and going around. But that's kind of the majority of what you see. That's where everybody is, is they're just 
on scooters or whatever they're touring around the island sometimes just during the day a lot of them are not spending the night uh, it is a popular day trip location um, and so you see a lot of that because they're very very visible and what few restaurants there are yes you're going to get a lot of uh, foreigners who are there eating food and stuff because they have to uh, but the majority of the island is not going out to those restaurants the majority of them are not going to the hotels the majority of them uh, 50,000 people right they live here and work here and it's a it's a regular uh, small uh, relatively uh, poor community in Nicaragua and uh, that's that's really the basis of the island the tourist while visible really really visible uh, don't make up that much of the activity that's actually going on. And so when you get here, um, there are, everyone has these stories that like the hotels don't answer. You put them on WhatsApp, they, they don't answer you. You call them, they don't pick up the phone. Uh, a lot of them are closed. We went to hotel after hotel uh, yesterday, uh, late at night, and they weren't even open. Like you, They didn't take walk-ins. Um, they were completely shut down. Um, they turn off the lights and everything, right? Like it's, um, and I get it if the economy is tough, but you have to be aware. You can't just show up. There's no central guide. Almost nothing is online. You look on even Instagram and Facebook, it's really hard to find any information on the hotels or restaurants here right? No menus online. The degree that we talk about how Nicaragua is not online and um, and it's hard to do like those online bookings and stuff with businesses in Nicaragua, all that is exacerbated to an extreme degree on Ometepe. Just take all of it up three notches. It's it's really mind-blowing. It is a world apart and the, the culture here is one of just, you know, you put up with it and um, the, the, the big industry of tourism here is a, an extremely laid back, it's backpackers and hippies who often are going to their own um, uh, prearranged hostels or uh, collective things and they're not looking at the more normal hotels. Uh, and they may have some plans around that already. Uh, so that also contributes to the fact that the number of tourists does not really indicate how much tourist infrastructure you're going to encounter when here. So there's a lot of surprises that may be coming. I got up early this morning and did quite a bit of recording before anyone else is awake while we were at the Hotel Hefziba and uh, I did get a chance to film a little bit. So if you watched yesterday's episode, all the outdoor space that I show in the garden, that is the garden at Hefziba and I filmed a little bit of it this morning as well. So I wanna share that with you. I'm doing some of the recording for this now that I am back home, simply because all the reasons we discussed on the video today, very busy today and all of my daylight was pretty much used either doing early morning filming or the logistics of the day. So we lost a lot of potential filming time, unfortunately, and looking forward to hopefully getting a lot more tomorrow. But the Hotel Hefseba was really nice. We walked to it from out of town last night. Uh, the rooms were pretty comfortable. Uh, they did have air conditioning. Like I said yesterday, the Wi-Fi was not the best, but they did have these beautiful gardens and beautiful outdoor seating areas uh, and tables and things to use. Um, and it was in a pretty nice location, not far south of Moyagalpa. Uh, and we were able to go for a walk this morning, which is when I recorded the video from the 12th that you saw previously in on Ometepe that was starting from the Hotel Hefseba and heading south of the airport and then coming back. Sorry, I had to switch to a different recording venue to finish up today's update. So all of this comes together to really make a situation where, yes, Ometepe has a wonderful tourism opportunity, but as someone who may be going to, to Ometepe, you really need to consider that it, it does not have the flexibility of a larger market. If you're in Nicaragua in general, which is still a pretty small market, you have the ability to simply drive to another town and stay at a hotel there. If a restaurant is closed where you want to be, you simply go on to the next one. Even in a, a market as small as Nicaragua, you can easily do that. If you're in Leon and there's nothing, you just go on to Chinandega or go to Managua. Always an option, but you're on the island, uh, you're really trapped in a tiny market. And that goes both ways. The businesses on the island have no ability to draw in more people than they already have. So if those people don't exist on the island, there's no way for them to make more money off of them. So the number of businesses are very limited and what they're able to provide is very little. And if there is not enough uh, tourism going on, they're simply going to be closed. Uh, so you really have to view things differently.
Um, and I would recommend, if you're going to be on Ometepe, making plans ahead of time. Make a list of restaurants you want to eat at and where you would want to go should they not be available. Make sure you have some idea of what your transportation is going to be, what you want to do on a given day, and most importantly, where you're going to stay. Make sure that is worked out ahead of time because there is just so much to go wrong. And today was our day of really finding that out. These are things that I mostly knew, but I didn't realize the degree to which this was true. And partially that's because things are far worse now. Uh, post COVID, after the pandemic, many businesses went just went under and many others have adjusted their hours and so forth. Uh, and the growth that we expected to happen didn't happen. And so Ometepe is an, is an area that's really heavily impacted. So you really have to remember, you are on an isolated island with a very small population, very few tourists and an extremely little going on. So be prepared for that or you're going to end up like we ended up, which is putting in way too much time into logistics. Now, all day yesterday was getting to the island. Our day today, I was up on the early side, so I went up and I did outdoor recording, and then I went for that long walk and recorded uh, the 12th while we were on Ometepe, that long walk by the airport. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch that one. And um, so I had a nice morning, got some exercise in. That was great. Once everybody was awake, we hiked into Moyagalpa, uh, proper because we were staying south of town by about a kilometer. Not bad. So we, we kind of gave it a late morning, got all packed up, checked out of the hotel, did as much uploading as possible, which was basically nothing, and uh, and walked downtown. We thought, oh, there's going to be no problem at all. We're going to hit downtown and uh, there's going to be loads of restaurants and loads of things to do. And it's going to be really easy to, to sit down. And, and one of the things we didn't have a hotel figured out for tonight, we knew we didn't want to stay in Moya Galpa, uh, which actually I think we should have. Um, and this goes with all the other things. When you're in a place like Ometepe, try to limit your logistical challenges. Partially that's by planning ahead, but also partially that partially that is by not moving around unnecessarily. So uh, don't don't jump to the um, or I would recommend against jumping to uh, doing things like, oh, I just want to go over to this other village to see this little thing. And then I want to go over to this village and see this thing. If you have your own car and the fun is driving around or you're on a scooter and the fun is scooting around, great. Then make a day of scooting and you just happen to have a place that's kind of your destination. That works just fine. But if you really want to see things and do things and you want to make your life relaxing and the, the point is not the driving or scooting or whatever, then be really careful because you could easily end up in a situation where you're creating a lot of time for yourself not doing the things that you wanted to do, which is seeing the island and may spend all of your time figuring out how to get where you want to go. So it was pushing lunchtime by the time we got into Moyo Galpa. Uh, we looked around a little bit and said, wow, there's very few restaurants we can find. We looked, online menus did not exist. Uh, we found one place called the Corner, uh, I believe it's the Corner Cafe, uh, Bed and Breakfast. Uh, they looked really good and certainly had some options. Now we're vegetarians, so that makes it a little bit more challenging than for most people. If you're, you know, able to eat anything, definitely some more options. Um, we went there and the food is fantastic. I'm gonna give a quick restaurant review. This place is right in the middle of, of the main settlement. Uh, beautiful, it kind of gives you a British pub feel. Really nice uh, venue. I did not look at the room, so I can't tell you about that. Uh, but the um, the meal was excellent. We had four people. We actually ordered five meals because they were a little bit small and we were really hungry. We had skipped breakfast, so we got some food to share. Uh, we had two sandwiches and some some other things and it was all really, really excellent. Like it was very, very good. I will go back there as well again. Um, and, and for us with Vegetarian Fair, they had a number of items that were uh, very interesting for us. Uh, the final bill came out to $50 even, uh, which is high, but that's only $10 per meal or about $12.50 per person with us having that extra little bit in there. That's not bad. Again, this lunch, at a tourist location. We did get some drinks in there. We got some uh, multiple coffees. Uh, so it really not bad, but uh, more than Nicaragua prices, but not bad at all. Um, but our goal was uh, to find a good place so we could settle in, have a nice leisurely lunch, enjoy ourselves. And that worked out perfectly. So that was a win. 
um, and get the internet there. And they had excellent internet, so that was a win. Just got on their Wi-Fi and oh, it was super fast. I was able to upload things and communicate with people and do all the things that I had not been able to do last night. And we spent a couple hours there trying to figure out where we wanted to go. And finding a hotel was all but impossible. Between wanting air conditioning, needing internet access, uh, wanting to be somewhere near something we wanted to do, it was a struggle. That is not to say that there weren't hotels available, but locating them online and booking them online, very few of them are on like booking.com or Airbnb. Uh, they were all like, oh, you have to just WhatsApp them or call them. Luckily, we had native Spanish speakers with us, so they tried to call some, but most of them wouldn't answer us uh, because there's a phone system problem here. So in most of Nicaragua, we don't use phones. We use WhatsApp. And so you can reach anyone, anywhere, anytime for free. But there is a phone system using the cell phones and there are multiple carriers and they really don't talk to each other very much. That's Claro and Tigo. So if you have a Tigo phone, it's difficult to call Claro and vice versa. And that can be a real problem. Some people have dual SIM cards for this reason. A lot of businesses will have a number for each carrier, so whatever you have, you're able to call them. Well, what we found is all of us are on Tigo, and every business we could find on the island was on Claro and Claro only. We were unable to call, even with local phones, we were unable to call or contact any business at all. What few we did manage to reach out to on WhatsApp or whatever, Instagram, they all either said they were closed or simply did not respond at all. Uh, so we were unable to book almost anything. We did eventually find something on booking. We were able to make a reservation, uh, and that was uh, the Hotel Congos in the village of Merida, really far away, but it looked really nice after we went through all these different places of looking in, and we said, oh, this place looks fantastic. We could easily settle into this little village, and that'll be good. Now, again, there's only about 50,000 people on the entire island. Hopefully the sound of people racing on the street out there is not uh, too much. And with settlements like Moyo Galpa having so many people, most of the other settlements have almost no one. Most of the villages you look at are absolutely tiny and they have essentially no resources. They might have a church, they might have a restaurant, they might have a hotel, but everything's might and only like one or maybe two. Moyo Galpa is about the only place that has a selection of things. So if you want to go from restaurant to restaurant, you want to switch hotels, that's where you need to be. Otherwise, you're going to be in very rough shape. You easily are going to end up in a spot where you have no real choices. Merida is the largest city on the smallest side of the four kind of islands. It's kind of like a figure eight. This is on the south side of the east island. Uh, and it, while it's the largest thing there, it does not have a paved road leading to it. It is on the dirt road. They are putting in pavers. That is happening really quickly, but it's way out there. So for us to get there, well, there is a bus, but it's very hard to schedule if you're going there. If you're going to one of the major settlements like Balway or Alta Gracia, those you can get to from Moya Galpa, there's a bus that runs that route. But going this way, there there is, but it doesn't run all the time and we didn't know how to do it and we didn't want to deal with it. So after our long leisurely lunch, we grabbed a taxi, the same one we took last night. He gave us a good price and drove us the hour out to Merida. A lot of that is because it's dirt roads. So we got to Merida, got to our hotel. The hotel is fantastic. We're really excited about that. And my filming at the beginning of today's episode is shot there at uh, Hotel Congos. And um, so there we settled in, we got um, casitas. They have nice air conditioning. They have adequate Wi-Fi. The whole thing was really good. They have a restaurant there, which we one of the things we required, we didn't want to have to worry about there not being a restaurant because like, that's what'll happen, right? Oh, I found this great hotel. It's next to this great restaurant. Oh wait, that restaurant's not open now or whatever, that can be a big problem. So having a hotel where everything was in, was potentially inclusive was really important. And there was people to give us guidance and stuff and just everything. They had resources, really nice hotel. Um, so the Hotel Congos, I recommend a lot, but book it before you go. Make sure there's rooms available. Make sure you know you're going there. Don't be like us and spend your, most of your day worrying about getting there. So it was actually getting late in the afternoon by the time we got there and we didn't have a lot of time to do anything. So we decided we weren't going to go anywhere because we didn't have time. It, was, it would take so long to get a taxi and go anywhere, so long to walk anywhere. There's nothing. We saw no restaurants. We saw nothing as we came in. Uh, we had heard there were one or two things there. We weren't able to locate them. That's another thing. People will tell you about things. They're not even on a map. And you're like, I, how am I supposed to ever find this stuff? It's not on Google Maps. It doesn't have a Facebook page. It doesn't have an Instagram page. It doesn't have a web page. No one has a phone number for it. It's just I heard of a name of a place in this town. Good luck, right? There's an awful lot. This is, you are stepping back 
50 years here, right? Like you, it throws you off how little infrastructure there is for getting you to be able to go to a restaurant or an activity. Uh, so um, so we, we kind of got in and relaxed for a little bit. I did a little bit of filming, got, got some of that caught up, so I was feeling good. And then everyone was kind of like, we're, we're kind of hungry and we really want to just relax and enjoy the fact that we're on Ometepe. So we went to the hotel restaurant and they were having, um, this is funny for a little hotel that has like nobody there because there's just nothing going on. Um, they're having Italian food week. So they have this entire menu of Italian food just for the week. Uh, now it is, uh, yesterday was, it was Valentine's Day. So they said that they're actually out of a lot of things. They had so many people come into the restaurant for Valentine's Day that um, we, we had limited choices, but they still had a very large menu still remaining. Uh, and we were able to order and ended up, we, we ordered a couple bottles of wine from Chile and we got a whole bunch of food. We got some pastas and different things and it was excellent. The food was fantastic. The wine was great. And just sitting out there all evening relaxing at the hotel with views of the jungle, a little bit of views of the, of the lake, that was really good. We had a wonderful evening doing nothing. And that's a lot of the Ometepe experience. It is all about relaxing. It's all about chilling and just taking it easy and good food. That's what you're going to do on Ometepe. Can you go climb a volcano? Absolutely. Can you go um, uh, swim in the, in the cold natural springs? Absolutely. Can you go look at uh, some pre-Columbian uh, stone carvings? Yes, there are some really decent things um, that you can do on Ometepe, but there's, there's not a lot of activities. They are few and far between. You have to make an effort to get to them. Um, and uh, for the most part, it's about just enjoying a beautiful environment, maybe exploring the jungle, definitely exploring the beaches, checking out the restaurants, but that's a challenge, right? Make sure you, you have a plan or you're okay with really scrambling for stuff and probably finding a hotel where you can really, really just relax. And that was our day. That was our, we took that right up until it was bedtime. We hung out there. We were like the only people in the restaurant all evening. So a few bottles of wine, we got uh, food and appetizers. We got the caprizi. I got the pesto pasta, which was fantastic. I had it made with arugula, which you don't normally get here. Everybody makes it with basil, which is still good. But I, I love arugula or rocket. Uh, that is one of my favorite foods that I was able to get a, an arugula uh, pesto made me so happy. And um, a really famous restaurant from Balway, which is on the same island, uh, makes a, uh, and this is a popular thing here. We don't get this so much in the United States. Of course you get it, but it here you, in many, many, many places you get spiced, uh, oils, right? So like, uh, olive oil that has had say habaneros in it or something like that. That's really common. Um, and that's where they get their spice. They're less likely to use a hot sauce. Like we think like a vinegar based, they're using oil based hot sauces more often. And they had one from, um, from Cafe Campestre in Balway that is olive oil steeped in scorpion peppers. And uh, I'm like, oh, I have to try this. So I added that to my pesto. Wow, really good. I can't, I can't believe I'm saying scorpion pepper in pesto is the way to go. That was, that was fantastic. And everyone else is like, I'm not even going to taste any of that. And I'm like, third helpings pouring it on. Dominic is like, are you out of your mind? I'm like, this is really delicious. So uh, we really enjoyed eating there. Uh, we are really liking the hotel. We like the owner of the hotel, the staff, everything is great. Uh, highly recommend it. And uh, that was our day. And, and it, we lost, in some ways we lost the whole day to logistics. And in other ways, we just got to where we needed to go and sat and enjoyed wine and pasta on the lakefront. It was fantastic. So. Success. Success by the end of the day. And lunch was fantastic too. And it was a nice walk this morning. So other than just there was a lot of logistics we had to deal with, it really was a, quite a nice day. Thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, help us get out and go to all these restaurants and bring these things to you and go on these trips. Buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Al Miller. That helps to fund this channel and make this all possible. And from the last couple of days, I can see that this content is a lot more exciting. I mean, I knew it would be. 
getting out and going places, showing the restaurants, showing more of us out. And as the show takes off, it's easier for me to get my crew to be like, oh, we're going to film you. It's okay that you're filming. Like, yes, people need to see this. There's so much going on. Of course, this is interesting. So now that the show is taking off, they're, they're understanding that. And uh, get down in the comments. I know there's lots of questions about food, lodging, activities, transportation in Nova Tepe. Let's talk about it. And uh, as always, share on social media. Tell your friends about the show. And uh, as always, I will see you tomorrow.